Hey, welcome to Statistics Lesson 1. In this unit, we're going to learn what statistics is, and we're going to learn about a bunch of tools that statistics offers us to pull meaning out of data. Okay, so what I mean by that, data is any set of information about something. So you do this on a regular basis. You have information about something in your brain. So let's say you send a text to a friend of yours, and it's taking them an abnormally long time to respond to you. Now you know that it's abnormal because in your head you have a bunch of data about how long it has taken them to respond in the past. And so that helps you decide, are they busy right now? Are they in trouble for some reason? I don't know. Have they lost their phone? And so that data about how long it takes to respond to a text is in your brain and you are doing some sort of statistical analysis just off the top of your head to decide what's going on with your friend. Okay, so that's statistics that you're doing already. Or if you play sports and you've played, you're playing hockey, you've played a certain goaltender frequently, and you know that they struggle with their glove hand, so you decide that you're going to take your shots mostly to the glove hand because statistically, in the past, you know that they have struggled with their glove hand, and so you're more likely to score. Okay, so those are statistics that you do without really doing any sort of formal math, but we're going to help you figure out how you can use statistics in a more mathematical way. Now, how do people use statistics? Let's say how do people use statistics, not how do you use statistics, because I have no idea how you use statistics personally. But statistics is used to compare things or compare people, like rankings or something like that. Um, for instance, points per game in hockey. Okay, so you can rank players based on how many points they score per game in their sport, and then it kind of determines their value, right? Both with a salary, from a salary point of view, and from an expectation of, of how much playing time should you give them in the Stanley Cup Finals or something like that. So points per game is a statistical tool that is used in sports all over the place to determine people's value and to set expectations. So you can compare things using statistics, you can predict things, and you can make decisions. So let me just show you a few different ways and hopefully that'll make it a little bit clearer. So here's the example I just gave. This is points per game, all time, total career for NHL players. So the first thing I would like to note is that the top six players all time are all Canadian. Isn't that wonderful? It is Canada's game, I guess. The first player all time points per game is Wayne Gretzky. Okay, so he scored 1.921 points per game. Now that doesn't mean that he scored 1.921 points every game. That wouldn't make sense at all. How do you get one thousandth of a point? Okay, that just isn't what it means. So this is the average or the mean points per game. So what they did was they added up all of the points that he scored and divided it by the total number of games he was in. And so that's how you get to 1.921 points per game. Next in line is Mario Lemieux. He played much fewer games, but ended up with a very close points per game ratio. And then from there, it's, it's quite the drop down to Mike Bossy and etc. Now, the only player who's near the stop, top of this list who's still playing is Sidney Crosby. Okay, and he's got 1.284, nowhere near... Wayne Gretzky or Mario Lemieux, but still really, really good. And here is where that comparison thing comes in. So finding the average points per game or mean points per game lets you know how players compare to one another. Now it's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult now um, comparing Sidney Crosby to somebody like Wayne Gretzky because goaltending was totally different. The game was totally different when Wayne Gretzky played. But still, let's say we're comparing people who are in the same era. Usually, their value, how much they get paid per year, is going to be very closely tied to their points per game. Or if they play a different position, maybe they're a, 
defenseman, then their points per game doesn't matter so much, and something else is determining their value. But still, there's some sort of statistic that allows people to be compared, okay? And then that also leads to managers knowing how to spend their money. So if you need to buy a defenseman, if you need to sign a defenseman, then knowing how players compare to each other tells you how much you should be willing to pay for any particular person. That's another way you can use statistics. So now if you're looking at your notes book, mean, that thing that we just, just talked about, is the very first measure of central tendency that we're going to discuss. Okay, so measure of central tendency sounds complicated, but really what it means is the search for average or the search for normal. So there are different ways that we can measure what the middle is or what normal is, what average is, and the first one is mean. Now normally we just actually call this average. And so the way to find average is adding up all of the numbers, adding up all of your data and dividing by how many data points you have. So with the points per game in hockey, that was adding up the number of points scored in total divided by the total number of games played. Okay, points per game. Um, in our case over here, suppose you get scores of 70, 94, 82, 96, and 70 on five tests. Calculate your mean. So you would calculate your mean by adding those five scores up. 70 plus 94. And then you would divide all of those by 5. Right? There are five total scores, so to average them out, you take all of your scores and divide them by five. But it's important that when you're putting this in your calculator, either you press equals after adding all these things up, or you put it in brackets. Because if you just press all of that, and then you press your divided by button, and press five, it's going to do 70 divided by five. It's just going to take the last one and then add all these other numbers, and it's not going to make any sense. Okay, so when you add all these three, all these five scores up and divide by five, I would advise pressing equals after the top bit, in which case you should get 412, then divide that 412 by five, and you'll get 82.4. So your test average then on these five tests would be 82.4%. Now you didn't get 82.4 on all of them, right? Sometimes you got lower, sometimes you got higher, but when you average them all out, when you find the mean, you get 82.4. Now there are times when calculating the mean does not actually give you a good picture of average or a good picture of normal. Okay, let's think about house prices. So usually, you're going to have a whole bunch of houses that are kind of around the same value if you're talking about the same area, but you might have one on that list that's just massively more expensive than all the rest of them. And that massively more expensive one will bring up the average quite significantly. So that one house is going to kind of change the picture of the value of houses in the area you're talking about. And so that's not mean then would not really be the best way of getting a good picture of what normal or what average is. So then we have a few other tools. One of them would be the median, which would be the middle score if you put all of your scores, if you put all of your data in order. And so if we're looking at the school basketball team, here's their first eight games. They scored 86 points, 61, 72, 80, etc. So if we're going to find out what the middle score is, we need to first of all put them all in order and then pick out what the middle one is. Okay, so when we put them all in order, you get 59, 61, okay, that's all of them in order. Now we need to just pick out what's the middle score and that would tell us the median. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the middle score should be right there. But there is no score there. So this would be, it would be pretty simple if 
there was an odd number of games played. Like if they had played seven games and they never scored this 91, then the middle score would be 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, then 74 would be the middle score. But there aren't an odd number of games. And so that means that we have to do an extra little trick. Okay, so let me just say if there's an odd number of data points, finding the median is really easy because you just find the middle number and you don't have to do anything else. Okay, um, but if you have an even number of values, you need to do one extra step. You need to find your two middle values. So that would be these two right here. And then you need to average them out. And so finding the mean of your two middle numbers just is adding them up and dividing by two, because there's two of them. Okay, so 74 plus 80 is 154 divided by two is 77. So 77 would be the median. It would be the middle number. If you took all the scores and put them in order, what's the middle one? Okay, and that's really helpful for when you have a really high number that's totally out of whack with everything else. That would be called an outlier. Or if you have a really low number, something like that, that's really going to skew the mean. So then using the median makes good sense. But when you have, an, when you have most of your numbers all clustered around the same area, then mean is totally fine to use. So if we look at example three, it's asking us exactly that. Is the median or mean a better measure of central tendency here? So the situation is this, John Boy is a real estate agent uh, in Blumenort. Last year he, hold nine, he sold nine homes there in the chart. And so if we're looking for what is his average home sale price, then we could just add them all up and divide by nine. That would give us the mean but maybe that doesn't give us the best picture of what an average home sells for in Blumenor. So if we look at our list here, there is one that is way different than all the rest of them. And that's this $784,500 one. That's just, it's not even close to all the rest of them. It's more than double the next highest one, right? 319 is the next highest one. It's more than double that. So it's just way out there for some reason. You might also see this 188 down here. This is somewhat lower than all of the rest of them as well. It seems a bit on the low end compared to where most of them are clustered, but it is much closer to the next one. The next one is 223. It's much closer to that one than 784500 is to its next one, which is 319. And so using the median here, might make more sense than using the mean because the mean would get skewed way upward from that $784,500 one. Okay, so that's that's the reason that you would use for median rather than mean. Now if we quickly calculate both the mean and the median then you're gonna have to trust me on this or check it later even better. Uh, you get a mean of $315,944 and 44 cents and you get a median so that's the mean and you get a median of two hundred sixty four thousand dollars gives you quite a different picture about average the mode is simply the most frequent score. You look at your list of data, whatever number shows up the most, that's the mode. Okay, so if you are looking at this electronics store, Lucius is the manager, the table contains the sizes of all the TVs sold last week. Which size is the most popular? So here is the set of all the TVs. Okay, we can just go through this list and figure out which size was sold the most, and that would give us the mode. So sometimes your list of information is, is quite long and difficult to keep track of some things, in which case you can just tally things. 
and this is a frequency table. Okay, and so if we're looking at 32 inch TVs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of them. So you could make a tally of seven of them. I'm just going to write seven in here. <laughs> That's just as good. Okay, so 32 inch TVs sold seven of them. 40 inch TVs, one, two, three, just three of them. Okay, and now you're going to go through the rest of it and figure out what the frequency is for all of those things. And there's all your frequencies. So the TV that was sold the most was this 32 inch TV. And the frequency was seven. So here's the question. What's the mode? Is the mode 32 or is it seven? It's 32. Okay, so the mode is the number that shows up the most. It's not how many times it shows up. Okay, so the mode here is 32 inches. That's the TV size that shows up the most. And how many times that happened? Seven. Though seven isn't the mode, it's 32.